Lights on, they've got them going the second time. Intracore, Admiralty Bay, slow out, eliminate Lucy out the back in the early parts. Stiletto way the best to begin. From now, Intracore going through and Senior Rally burning up. Quartz is out a little bit wider. And they were followed as they settle down by Nareen. And they've broken out two lengths to Admiralty Bay. Lemonade Lucy gets well out of her ground on the early part from Hey Halo. And last of all, Flame of Bengal. Senior Rally is just in front after going about 400 metres. Leads about a half length as they run up towards the home turn from Stiletto way. It's going quickly. Three lengths away, Happy Features under a bit of pressure. Courts of four, three off the lead. Then Nareen, Lemonade, Lucy, Admiralty Bay, Flame of Bengal, well back in Chakor and Hey Halo. At the top of the straight, Senior Rally a length in front. Coming in at Stiletto Way on the outside. Clark gets anxious, he shakes up the favourite and Courts are starting to storm home. Senior Rally's opened up a length and a half to Stiletto Way. Courts are running on hard late but it's going to be too late I feel. Senior Rally in front of Courts are, and Senior Rally's just won a court for a good effort second. Third place goes to Stiletto Way, then Nareen, Flame of Bengal, Lemonade Lucy, Happy Features in Shakur, Admiralty Bays runs second last, and the last horse past the finishing post was Hay Halo. Close to a start back here at Caulfield where there has been a late scratching, number 15, Nam Tello. The favourite in the second is number two, High Waters. There has been a plunge on uh, one here, number 10, good old Ted. Here's our caller, Danny Milley. Thanks a lot, Keith. Good old Ted, very smart. I saw him win a trial at Epsom one day and he was eight lengths in front after they went, went a furlong, which was quite amazing. He won by about ten lengths that day and he's very good, although there is some smart horses in here, including the top two. Now, uh, as well as Nam Tello, a late scratching in race three, Brown Vino was scratched at 12.59. So race three scratched Brown Vino. In this race, Nam Tello is the withdrawal. That's number 15, taken out by order of the stewards. Lights flashing, race number two, and they're racing as the gates crash back. Sculptured Arch and good old Ted, look at him on the outside, he's five in front already. Good old Ted right towards the outside, burning like the wind is well clear. Ranches image second, and now Sculptured Arch gets up on the inside, and they're well clear from high waters. He gets the fourth. He's the favourite. A length and a half away, then a Zafari going fairly fast, and now mouth watering makes up ground. So fast under pressure, so is Bajilla. Legless is out the back, 12 off the lead. Mac Wind was second last and Red Ernie last of all. Coming to the corner and good old Ted's about four lengths in front. Ranch's image second. Sculptured Arch being niggled at. Two lengths away. High Waters under the whip. He's got them all off the bit. Good old Ted. Around the turn 300 to go. He runs four away from the rail but he's four in front. In second placing Ranch's image. Then High Waters. Sculptured Arch so fast. Mouth watering running on well. Good old Ted. He's two lengths in front with 150 left to go. He's run them ragged. High Waters gets to second from so fast. Good old Ted can't pick back his legs near the post but he'll win it. A very fast race horse. Good old Ted wins a length. Second high waters. Third home in the race is a photo finish, but it might have been Ranch's image just in front of so fast. Then came Mac Wynn, made up a huge amount of ground from Red Ernie Mouth Watering, followed by Zapari, then came Legless, and it's finished near the tail end of the field. Well, what a brilliant performance, Des. Well, as you said before the race, Congratulations, Sean. You've got a speedster there. Ah, I tell you what, Graham, I don't know who's shaking most. We were in the last little bit. I think the condition was starting to tell a little, perhaps, but uh, we're delighted. Uh, we were a bit unlucky. We were hoping to run him earlier on in the spring and uh, just couldn't quite get him right at the time, but today all went to plan and uh, relieve men. <laughs> yeah, the word from the track's been very good for some time now. Yeah, he's been working quite well. He probably hasn't been in work all that long, and uh, today we just had the fingers crossed and we're hoping for the best. He's pretty quick early. And what's next? Ah, one day at a time. <laughs> we'll get over this one and just see what's on the horizon. Great. Congratulations, Sean. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thanks. Thanks very much, Graham Kelly and Sean Cosgrove. What a brilliant horse. He really ran them ragged. He was at Caulfield.
flashes and racing under scrutiny. Missed it about a length, but they're not going all that quickly, so it won't be all that important. Count seal the inside of Great Quest and Southern Pirate Flaming Capri, the steeplechaser wide. They were followed by Brisk and Peter's Yachts out three deep. His second last, two and a half lengths to under scrutiny, given time to settle. The steeplechaser Flaming Capri, who's actually the outsider in this field, has taken up the running. The bolt of Flaming Capri leads by two lengths. Now Brisk gets over to get the run of the race in second place in Great Quest was third. Count Seal's boxed up on the inside past the 1400 metres mark. They were followed by Southern Pirate and two lengths away last of all was under scrutiny and it's about eight lengths off the lead. Going along the back of the course though and Flaming Capri leads by two lengths. It's a stable mate of Peter's Yacht. So Peter's Yacht's in uh, fifth placing while Flaming Capri is at uh, in front. It leads a length and a quarter. Brisk in second placing and travelling pretty well. Two and a half to Great Quest and Count Seal then Peter's Yacht the Grey on the outside of Southern Pirate and two and a half lengths away last was under scrutiny. Well, they've gradually quickened up the pace as they run down the railway side. They've got about 900 metres to run and the leader Flaming Capri about a half to three quarters to Brisk. A length and a half to Great Quest who's had good cover throughout. Peter's Yacht was next and Count Seal saving every inch of ground on the fence. A length further back to Southern Pirate and under scrutiny. They're starting to bunch up. They've got about 550 to go and over on the inside the leader Flaming Capri but about to be grabbed by Brisk and Great Quest three deep. Count Seal trying to get off the fence and now under scrutiny starting to sprint. Peter's got and two lengths away. Southern Pirate left behind as they went quick. On the turn, 400 metres left to run. Brisk is taken on by Great Quest. Great Quest goes to the lead on the turn. Under scrutiny comes at them three deep. The three favourites together. They're four to Count Seal. Peter's got Southern Pirate and Flaming Capri at the 250 and under scrutiny moved up the Great Quest under the whip. Brisk under pressure over on the inside. It's Great Quest fighting back under scrutiny the outside. Great Quest has again gone to the front from under scrutiny in a great performance. He's brought back the way to three to win. Great Quest drew away to win by nearly two lengths. Under scrutiny, second, third, Brisk, and then Peter's Yacht Count Seal, Southern Pirate, and the pacemaker, Flaming Capri, has been a fairly distant last. Well, that's three number days. four paid $1.50 the win and 60 cents a place, five under scrutiny, 70 cents, and one Brisk paid 65 cents. The Quinella, $3.55, and the trifecta for four, five, and one paid $10.45. The running double, $15.00. And 26. Let's uh, have a look now at the tote update for race four, where number one, Space Meters. They're going 150 metres for the uh, fourth race here at Caulfield, and Spacecraft has taken up the running past the 1350. He's bounded straight to the front, and this is his favourite role. Spacecraft, the top eight, a length and a quarter. In second placing now was uh, Valiant for Truth trying to push up on the inside. Sejuna goes forward. They were followed a length and a half behind those flying Eskimo. They were followed by Silent Prince, and this is the horse that's won in three states, Queensland, New South Wales, and South Australia. He's the favourite Silent Prince, and the Colin Hayes colours fifth. The length away Silver Shark. Then Celtic Air followed by Toy. One and a half to Bayern River racing ungenerously. He's got his mouth wide open. Gucci Sun second last and Iskra last of all. About 12 lengths first from last. They've moved along too. And the leader of Spacecraft by a length and a quarter. Sejuna in second placing. Valley for Truth boxed up on the fence third. One to Silent Prince. It's had a beautiful run. A length and a half to Flying Eskimo. The grey Silver Shark on the fence. Toy trying to go forward. Celtic Air around the outside followed by Iskra Bayern River and Gucci Sun last of all but Spacecraft gave him the slip about 400 metres to go and Spacecraft race clear, he's three lengths in front of Sejuna under pressure followed by Valiant for Truth, Silver Shark, Silent Prince taken to the outside, Bayern River very wide but Spacecraft has got a huge lead, at the top of the straight and Spacecraft's about five in front Valiant for Truth second, now Silent Prince is into the clear, followed by Silver Shark and Bayern River starting to make a home but Spacecraft is well in front he's run the rag and he's four lengths clear of Silent Prince and Bayern River and Spacecraft leads throughout. Spacecraft three links. Second by and River, third Silent Prince and fourth Silver Shark. Then Gucci's son Iskra, Toyed Valley Infantry, Flying Eskimo, Celtic Air. And Satuna was the first horse beaten. Was beaten at the 400 that wound up last. At end of this race, we'll have one boat ahead because this is the final race. We've had four already. The score is two all. We've seen one incident in this start already where the yellow flag uh, protesting has gone up on the Australian boat. We'll have to wait to see whether or not the uh, jury on the water accepts that. High Gods won its last three races in a row and keeps improving too. The set racing. Al Murdajaz got out okay. Glenview was the best one to leave the starting stalls and now High God going fairly fast. 
Uh, Forsyth going through in the pack, and El Murder Jets just a lost a little bit of ground. There goes back the third last. Ted Woodman gets up on the inside to go to fourth. Second last was Blazing Sword, and Dorchester last of all. They race up past the 700 metres mark, and High got on the outside of Tin Woodman. A four set sits up in the centre, a length and a half to Glenview. She's got the sit on the three leaders, and then Blazing Sword, Sonic Zoom, El Murder Jazz, and two lengths away, Dorchester. Running up by the 600, Tin Woodman leads by a neck to a four set. High got out three deep, and they're two lengths, El Murder Jazz running on strongly, followed by Glenview, Blazing Sword, and about three lengths to Sonic Zoom, Dorchester. They're really starting the sprint as they come to the turn. A four set puts the pressure on Tin Woodman. El Murder Jazz looms up three deep, and they're two lengths to Glenview, Blazing Sword. High got going backwards as they run down to the 300. It's El Murder Jazz on the outside of Tin Woodman. El Murder Jazz has taken the lead from Tin Woodman. Now Glenview and Blazing Sword out of the pack, but El Murder Jazz has sprinted to the front. He's home. El Murder Jazz will win from Tin Woodman and Blazing Sword. El Murder Jazz first. Tin Woodman second, third placing Blazing Sword in front of a full set. Then Glenview followed by Dorchester. High God and last in was Sonic Zoom. Well, Al Murder Jazz uh, in the guineas here was just nutted. He's a pretty good sort of a galloper, as proven by the time they ran. They broke 110 for that race, 19.9. Lights on, gates fly back racing. Terrific was actually best to leave the starting stalls. Flash Sam missed the start. Now Terrific losing speed goes back. The best horse out now was at Karras, and he'll try and lead. Pushes up on the inside. From Noble Bear, a length and a half away. Strawberry Ranch couldn't lead today from Lonely Dreamer. Now Vividly goes through the pack. He runs up to be fifth, followed by Right Aspect, Silver Scout, Flash Sam. Then came English Charm, and Terrific three lengths away. At Karras in front, 500 to go. A half to Noble Bear, putting the pressure on him. Two lengths to Strawberry Ranch, who's travelled well. Followed by Right Aspect, Lonely Dreamer. Dreamer over on the outside as they come to the turn from Flash Sam getting back a little bit on straightening up though 350 to go Ed Karras in front of Noble Bear Strawberry Ranch out three deep and then Lonely Dreamer running on from Flash Sam Silver Scout making up some ground Strawberry Ranch goes to Ed Karras in the centre Noble Bear and now Lonely Dreamer and right aspect down the outside Ed Karras in front coming in at Strawberry Ranch the outside Strawberry Ranch Flash Sam the fence Flash Sam got up Flash Sam on the inside, beat second Strawberry Ranch. And in a photo, third might have been Ed Karras from Lonely Dreamer and English Charm. What a thrilling finish. Then right aspect, followed by Noble Bear. Next home, terrific. He wasn't far behind them from Silver Scout and Vividly. Well, thrilling go, Desi. I could see that that was going to happen a long way out. He was just going to need a bit of a run. Gary Murphy, he's ridden a double today. He's been out of luck for quite some time, but that was a classic ride. So it's a vital position and one that has to be earned. In fact, the bowman probably has more pressure on him in certain stages of the race than possibly any other crew member on the Gilgood's bell is right. Spider Rose stands up, ready racing. Citrus Princess missed the start, three lengths. Natalia jumped out well and so too did Miss Munda. Followed by Zeno in the early part of the race. Ace Trim spending well away. Spider Rose, True Glamour. A couple of the bolters going up towards the lead. Hydro's Girl was up there in the early part. Zeno gets back a little bit. It's midfield from Gilgood's Bell Campari Girl. Please Yourself has only got about six or seven behind her as they settle. Capability Brown went back to near the tail. Citrus Princess is trying to save Brown. She tried to get up on the inside but got chopped off over the crossing. She's now back last. Table Habits third last around the outside of Flying Crystal. Down the railway side a thousand to go and True Glamour leads the length to Miss Munda. Three quarters away Hydro's Girl third then Spider Rose Natalia. About three quarters of a length to Crench and last two lengths away then a spending. Going around the mat wide now was Gil Goods, Bell Campari, Girl Zeno, Fiery Cinders. Then Please Yourself and Table Habits both starting to make ground from Ace Trim Flying Crystal. Citrus Princess hemmed in nowhere to go second last and Capability Brown last of all. By the 550 it's True Glamour just in front, being pressured now by Miss Munda. Spider Rose goes up three deep and a length away. Crench and last Hydro's Girl. Back behind those, Natalia. Gil Goods Bell around the outside and then Please Yourself spending. Table Habits is eight off the lead and then Ace Trim, Fiery Cinders. Well back in the field, True Glamour, Zeno, Citrus, Princess, Flying Crystal. Down to the 300 metres point. Spider Rose goes to the front. Crench and last won't go straight. If it does, it might get up. It's coming it after Spider Rose. And look at spending in the centre. The big mare spending took over as Hydro. Hydro's Girl got up on the fence. Hydro's 
Bill has grabbed the lead from Spending and High Coast Bill's won it by a neck to Spending. Very close for third between Spider Rose and French and Lass. Then came Table Habits and Please Yourself, Natalia. Fiery Cinders, Miss Bunda, Gil Goods Bell. They were followed home by Zaino, True Glamour, Campari Girl, Capability Brown, Flying Crystal and Citrus Princesses round up near the tail. Well, uh, the winner won for the bookies, number 10, Hydro's Girl, paying on the Victorian tote, $23.85 for 50 cents. The place dividend, $5.60. Number four, Spending, $1.00. 45, 6 Crenshaw, last 2.15 from Cronulla, dividend and, and uh, double yet to come. Graham Kilbauer, and they will be, it's there just in case they, they decide they want to change. If they do change, they will do it after they jive around the mark. So the margin was 2 minutes 54 seconds at the fifth mark. And John Bertrand, just how easy or hard is it to actually steer a boat around a mark? You've got a wheel there, it's a helms when it, it looks like driving a car. You just go to the left or the right and the, and the, the car goes with you. Is it the same in a, in a 12 metre yacht? On the contrary. To be right, the third handicap, this distance is 1,100 metres. Racing, Royal South Street jumped out fairly quickly with Torquay Boulevard, Carmina Div and Kustamit towards the outside, VCDR driving through with Wise Scarlet. Arturis was up there in the early part of the race, Zurab will settle about midfield. They were followed back behind them by Gone. Del Matinska getting a long way back in the early part from Ad Living, it's near last with Margot Magic and Goldman Jane actually last of all as they settle. About 650 metres to go, Royal South Street on the outside of Wise Scarlet, a length away, very droll. She's up a lot closer to Day. She's only linked off from before the turn. They were followed behind them by VC Diart. Kustamit running on. Zurab's under a little bit of pressure, about five off the lead. Then Flash Poppy, Carminative around the outside. Well back, Del Matinska out to he's going backwards at the top of the straight. And Very Droll is out after Royal South Street. Kustamit into the clear. Why Scarlet battling away? But the top he has pounced on the leaders at the 200 metres mark. And Very Droll raced away. Royal South Street's fighting back gamely. They're clear from Why Scarlet. Kustamit, Very Droll in front. She's just doing enough there to post and very droll wins it. About a half a length. Second Royal South Street, third Kustam at Zurab fourth. Then came Y Scarlet and Flash Poppy. Next time in the race would have been at the head of the others, Golden Jane, Del Matinska, then Margot Magic, VC Diart, Art Torquay Torquay Boulevard at Living Go Faith Gone, Boulderu and Carminative. Well, was I, about the last to finish, Des. It was. And I thought third. Gary Finnessy deputising for uh, Colin Hayes today, producing three winners. Colin's apparently a little bit ill, and the stable has uh, produced three winners for the afternoon, which is a terrific effort. Michael Clark rode a double, and Gary Murphy also rode a double this afternoon. So very droll, successful in the last race here. Keith placings, 1, 7, and 5, and the time, 1, 3, 8, which is only a second outside Snippets record. Wellington Cup. Any second? Twister gets ready. Empire Rose has gone in, they're off. Way they go in the cup, and Empire Rose bounded out pretty well to be in a handy spot early, and getting out pretty well also was Koch King and Dark Moment spearing up into a good spot early. Dropping off behind them in the early part was Argonaut Style, getting back was Sage, the last he's in the last two or three, and so was Globetrotter, and Bullion's drifted a wee bit as well. They settle down now, and Koch King's going to be the leader from Empire Rose, Lagerfeld and Dark Moments, and Fleetwood Lad getting up on the inside of this group then to Mr. Bunny Thorpe, Tristan is wide in the, in, in the early part, followed by Infantry trying to get a bit of cover back on the inside. The rest is there, followed by Gallipoli and Zelazny. Chance for goal getting back with Sage, then Globe Trotter, Noble, Khan, and Bullion. And last of all is Argonaut Style. 2,400 left to go, and Kosh King out wide on the track has made the lead now from Lagerfeld. Lying third on the outside was Dark Moments, followed along the inside by Mr. Bunny Thorpe. The next one on the outside was Empire Rose. She's running about fifth in the clear at the moment. Back on the inside of her to Rastus. They were followed by Tristica in the centre then was Fleetwood Lad Zelazny along the fence then Gallipoli out wide was Sovereign Court followed by Chance for Gold then Sage and Infantry Noble Khan Bullion Globetrotter and two lengths last Argonaut Style Koch King has got away to a lead of about six lengths leaving the straight now by a six from Lagerfeld Dark Moments a neck away getting a nice run about four to Mr Bunny Thorpe at Empire Rose and Rastus in the centre is Fleetwood Lad Tristigas three deep a length away to Zelazny then Gallipoli followed by Sage and Chance for Gold Sovereign Court next in Noble 
Cannon for three Bouillon. Globe Trotter and last of all in the Cup Argonaut style. And it's 20 links off the pace. A solid clip as they run to the 1600. Kosh King in the hands of Kim Clapperton just slowed them up a wee bit. Led by three links from Lagerfeld trailing. Over on the outside, the dark moments about three to Mr. Bunny Thorpe on the outside to Empire Rose and Rastas. Tristan is tracking here up, followed on the inside, the inside of that by Fleetwood Land. Zelazny was next in Gallipoli, about two lengths away to Sovereign Court, three deep around Sage and Chance for Gold. Three back to Noble Khan, they were followed by Infantry, four to Bouillon and Globe Trotter, and two back to Argonaut Style. No change in the cup, down about 1,050 to go. Kosh King making its all its own rules in front, led the way by four lengths from Dark Moments. Flying third was Lagerfeld, about two back to Empire Rose, getting handy. Then Mr. Bunnythorpe, Christica's next, followed by Fleetwood, Ladd and Rastus. Then Sovereign Court being punched along. Two lengths away, infantry making ground around Gallipoli and Zelazny. Two to Noble Khan, Bullion starting its run. Well back in the field, chance for gold, followed by Argonaut, Say, oh, Argonaut style. Lagerfeld went back at that point, then Globetrotter and Sage is last. Across the top, 6.50 left to go. Kosh King, dark moments, and on the outside, Christica. Right in behind them, Empire Rose and Mr. Bunnythorpe. Bullion's coming into a big run. Fleetwood Land, Sovereign Court, Noble Khan's coming into it. They were followed by Rastus and further back in the field of infantry. On the turn in the cup now, and Dark Moments went up to Kosh King. Empire Rose is not getting much of a go, but it's a bit flat now. At the moment, the leader, Kosh King, out wide. Here's Bullion, and here's Noble Khan coming with a big run down the outside. Up to the front. Noble Khan in front of the cup from Bullion. Fleetwood Land running on Tristiger. They were followed by Kosh King, but Noble Khan. Fleetwood Land's coming hard, but Noble from Fleetwood Land and Bullion. Fourth home, Kosh King came again from Tristica, Mr. Bunnythorpe. Dark moments gave in. Then Infantry Empire Rose was no, nowhere near them. Rastas was next, Argonaut style. Followed home then by chance for gold. Zelazny Globe, Trotter Gallipoli, Sovereign Court. And last, second last is Sage, and a long last was Lagerfeld. Well, of course, the Victorian TAB bet on the Wellington Cup. 13.89, the tote dividends. 13 Noble Khan, 26.05 and 6.55. Fleetwood Lad, 2.30. 9 Bouillon, $2.70. Quinella, 92.40. And the trifecta, $3,422.05. Unfortunately for Empire Rose, it looked like she's bowed out on a sour note, but what a racehorse she's been. She's just been absolutely magnificent. She carried 57 today, and Keith, I don't think she was suited on a wet ground because she's never performed well in those conditions before. Now there's no doubt about that Danny, it was rather sad track conditions or weather conditions had been perfect up until the, the 24 hours before the cup, Empire Rose was a nominal odds on favourite bearing in mind that it's all tote betting in New Zealand and it was rather sad that the conditions stopped her winning uh, a group one staying race on her exit from the turf, nevertheless she has been a wonderful race mare. Well, in Sydney... Uh... Welcome back live to Caulfield on this magnificent afternoon. We've got brilliant racing both in Melbourne. In Sydney, we're hearing some of the results. We know that Bo Zam just won only moments ago. He defeated Eye of the Sky and never quit. And magnificent return for the horse that's won over more than $2 million in prize money. Tonight, there's harness racing, a big night of harness racing. The Derby Preludes are on Des, and, of course, the Trotters Championship. True Roman's coming off a very tough mark, 65 metres. He got beaten in this race last year. You've got Rivoli, Jack and Sir Riley later on. What a marvellous program. Well, last week uh, I was working there and I'm working again tonight as the assistant judge and there's some very keenly contested races last week and a lot of those horses are going around tonight. And again, we have the heats of the Victoria Derby. But I'd like to congratulate you first on your little win yesterday. Thank you. I've got a few congratulations. So actually, thank you very much. To the very uh, smooth, man. Smooth. It was. Yeah. Trainer driver Ian Dorner for a terrific drive. He drove a double yesterday. He's only got a small team, and it was a terrific performance to get the horse home, and we're all very wrapped, as owners would be. I should think so. But as you said, tonight it's going to be one heck of a program, and the weather's going to be lovely. Good to get out there to get the people out to look at the... The real keenly contested races. I really think True Roman in that race tonight is going to make up that 65 metres. Uh, it's a heck of a start, but I do feel as though he might just make it up tonight, and it's going to be a very thrilling race. It is. It's a terrific program. It's one. It's almost like a Caulfield Guineas or Victoria Derby Day, as opposed to in the racing tonight's program. There are that many class horses running. Unfortunate Rockley Victory is not in, but you've got horses like Double Wipe, Nero's Jay. Uh, horses in a state like Westburn Grant and of course there's Rivoli Jack he we all know right. Rivoli, Sir Riley and there's True Roman and then top other horses in the other races, up and comers all the up and comers like the three year olds because uh, harness racing horses take a bit to mature but the three year olds give a great uh, fillip to the uh, racing program tonight, I reckon it'll be a heck of a night 
now putting in his run. Bozam and Never Quitter fighting it out. Royal Pardon is dying on his run. In fact, Eye of the Sky is going to beat him home. Eye of the Sky is coming out after Bozam. Bozam, hands and heels, is in front. Eye of the Sky is trying to reach the champ, but he won't pick him up. And Marshall... Bozam, ridden hands and heels by John Marshall, started favourite at 10 to 9 on from Eye of the Sky at 20s and Never Quit at 4 to 1. At Caulfield, the $50,000 Peter Jackson saw... Sparkling third in the Jardin Mile. To the multiple...